Over the past century, meat consumption has risen dramatically. A growing and more affluent population wants more and more of it, and industrialized farming has made it a staple. By 2050, global appetites are set to more than double, which is environmentally unsustainable. But scientists have come up with a breakthrough solution to the problem, which means in the future, the meat we see here won't come from the farm, but from a laboratory. This place is hopping. It's really busy in here, and it's not even noon. People are serious about their meat. Can I ask you what you're buying? Two, 140 pounds fillet steak is my husband's normal Friday dinner. That's his treat. No, not this week. This is Friday dinner. Oh, wow. <laughs> Every Friday? Most Fridays. Yeah. <laughs> this is my full chart come here four, five days a week. How much meat would you say you guys go through in a week? We go through uh, probably a whole cow, four, five pigs, uh, 20 lambs, four, or 500 chickens. Wow, that's like a full Noah's Ark that <laughs> you're serving up every yeah. week. On average, Britons get through 84 kilos a week per person per year. And it isn't just an eat-at-home treat. At Corrigan's in Mayfair, they cater to a mainly meat-eating clientele. How important would you say meat is to the menu here? Massively. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, it doesn't matter how, how much the trends keep changing. There's always going to be somebody looking for uh, something like this. Could you imagine ever a day where you're placing a meat that was grown in a laboratory on that master barbecue? I would find it hard to believe. Our unique selling point would be gone. Hand-reared beef like this, getting it from the farm to here, to the customer, is what we're all about. For me, what is appealing about the lab-grown option is that no animals are killed and it takes up less environmental space and there's less of an impact on the waterways and the land. And I feel like that could kind of maybe offer sort of an alternative to this demand that isn't diminishing. What do you think about that? I would like to eat it and try it, um, but trying to sell it to, to a consumer, uh, I think it, 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 it's going to be quite difficult. I can understand Aiden's skepticism, but lab-grown meat is already a reality and it's only a matter of time before it reaches the public. In 2013, Dr. Mark Post and his team at the University of Maastricht in Holland made headline news when they proved it was possible to grow meat with a single cow muscle sample. It feels like a uh, conventional hamburger. And now the race is on with scientists competing to be the first to create a lab-grown burger to market to the masses. I've come to the University of Maastricht in Holland, where Dr. Post has agreed to talk me through how they make cultured meat. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Hilary. Hi, Mark. Pleased Welcome. to meet you. Mark and his colleagues are one of a number of teams around the world who are searching for a way to scale up production of lab-grown meat. If they succeed, the environmental impact could be enormous. Cows are ruminants. They have these funny uh, multi-stomach uh, things where they basically bacteria in their stomach ferment. And in that fermentation process, uh, methane uh, gets released. And that's affecting global warming and, and the climate. And methane is actually a very powerful greenhouse gas. It's uh, 20 times more powerful than CO2. Um, so yeah, and, and livestock is accountable for 40% of all methane emission. The impact of farming cattle on climate change is so significant that some experts believe giving up beef reduces our carbon footprint more than giving up cars. But how do we get a hamburger from a test tube? So this is a um, small uh, piece of uh, muscle taken from uh, with a biopsy, with a needle biopsy. Uh, this is taken um, uh, half an hour ago from a cow. What's the next step then, once you do the extraction? So, um, the, the stem cells in a muscle are just sitting there waiting to repair the tissue when it's injured. So mm -hmm. if a muscle fiber is torn, then uh, the, cells, the stem cells come in and they start to proliferate and form a new muscle tissue. That's what they do in the body. So what we're doing right now is dissecting, dissecting every single muscle fiber so that the stem cells kind of think 
well, there's an injury here. We need to start coming out and start to proliferate. That helps them multiply, that tricking them multiply. into thinking they need to repair a part of the body? Right, exactly. So out of this small extraction that we've taken, how many patties do you think we could grow? About um, 80,000. 80,000 burger patties, mm -hmm. just from this bit of liquid? Right. That's right. unbelievable. The tissue is then placed into a blender before an enzyme is added to break it down even further into individual muscle fibers. So by maximizing how much you break down the tissue in and encourage the cells to multiply, you're getting more product out of that bit of liquid. Right. Once broken down further and fed a special culturing solution, the cells are placed in an incubator. So the conditions in here are replicating the conditions inside the cow? Right. Exactly. Temperature, Temperature oxygen. Uh, oxygen, CO2, everything that they need to grow. In the warmth, they will begin to multiply. And once there are enough cells, they're taken out and grouped together, where they automatically contract to form tissue. This is the moment I've been waiting for, actually seeing a tangible burger. Right. Well, a, a tiny one. A tiny piece of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is, um, this is the end result where you have the individual fibers. So this is about 400 of those fibers. Mm -hmm. An entire hamburger is about 10,000. Yeah, I mean, that, look, yeah. that looks like minced meat right. to me. That, that's absolutely right. mint and grown purely in a lab. This is grown purely in a lab, yeah. And this is pure meat. Though Mark and his colleagues have proved that the science works, the challenge for his team and others all around the world is producing cultured meat in a cost-effective way. I'm hoping Peter Verstraight, Mark's business partner, can offer some thoughts on who might be the first to get this product to supermarket shelves. Hi. Hi there. I'm Guillory. Welcome. Pleased to meet you. Come in. Thanks. The initial breakthroughs really happened in the labs here, but the idea has really taken off in the US and Silicon Valley, where all the tech startups are, and there seems to be a space race to get this product on the shelves. What's going on over there, and how does that compete with what's happening here? Well, to be honest, we don't exactly know what's going on there. We know that a lot of money, investment money, is going towards uh, uh, several companies. And they all sort of have the same uh, tentative timing uh, with respect to them going to the market as we have, being that in a couple of years, um, the first initial small introduction in the market of a product will happen. And who's going to be the first, we'll have to see. There's no question the future of meat will be different for all of us. But if I'm honest, I'm not sure what I think about eating meat grown in a lab. And I suspect that I'm not alone. Hi. Hello. I'm Guillory. Hi. Pleased to Hello. meet you. Hi, welcome. Kurt von Mensvoort, an Amsterdam-based artist, is determined to get us to confront our discomfort, starting with a future-forward cookbook. Not in every kitchen yet, is it? Not yet. It's 45 recipes you cannot cook yet. So all these dishes, they are specifically made to stir the conversation. I hope it will uh, familiarize more people with this new technology so that it's less scary and it will facilitate the conversation around it so that we can make better choices on what, what we actually want. Did I see a classic kebab in there? As an Iranian, that's the one I'm uh, yeah, most excited is... about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is indeed uh, the in vitro kebab. It, it has its own bio incubator so basically this kebab will be growing infinitely it's interesting when i when i think of the kebab and, and, and my culture i mean the slaughter of the animal and the preparation of the food the whole ritual yeah. is such a big part of different cultures i think it might be really hard to sort of separate the two absolutely yes and uh, we can only do it if we replace it with new kinds of rituals or behaviors that have new meaning as well Court expects that within the next 10 years, we will all be confronted by lab-grown meat on our plates. In readiness of that, he's taking reservations at an unusual restaurant. Is this an actual restaurant that you go to, or is it an online one, or how, do, how does it work? It's called In Vitro Bistro. Right now, it's only an online restaurant, and um, we serve food for thought because we only take reservations from 2028. What you do is pick uh, a starter, a main course, and a dessert. This one is for more Korean people. 
Whoa. Uh, because in Korea, there's this habit of eating live octopus. Oh. And this is uh, something similar, That's... but then completely synthetic and it it moves, but it doesn't have a central oh, nervous guess. system. It does not feel pain. And there it goes. Not for you, I believe. No. Yeah, from April, we have, we have room. April 2029. Maybe I'll book something for my birthday. Okay, I think your booking has been made. Cool. See you in 2029. <laughs>